So I want to talk about reversal candlestick patterns and not continuation patterns. And why is that? Uh, Steve Nissen, a lot of people know him as pretty much the guy people think is responsible for bringing candlestick patterns to the Western world. Um, and Steve stated that reversal candlesticks are more meaningful because they will allow you as a trader to enter a position when the current trend may be turning and exit a position before the trend reverses and taking back all those profits that you made. And also many academic studies, they focus on the reversal as well. So there's evidence to suggest that reversal candlestick patterns are where we should focus and that's what we're going to do. And we'll also focus on the open and closes of the candlesticks. And generally, we're not going to concern ourselves with the shadows. And let's just say it out front. Nothing is going to predict with 100% certainty. But there are some reversal candlestick patterns that perform better than others. And you'll probably be surprised that I am not going to cover popular ones such as the shooting star candlestick. I'm not going to cover hammers or dojis. Okay, we're going to cover one to three day candlestick patterns and using candlestick charts, of course, not chart patterns such as the butterfly pattern or the cup and handle pattern. Okay, we're not going to cover those. So reversal candlestick directional types. Well, having a trend in place is where you're going to find reversals useful. Reversal candles, they can form in a few different areas. They can form during the corrective move of market for pullback traders and reversal candles in those areas can assist you in your trade entry locations. We also know that markets trend and they reverse. And finding that point where we can see a prolonged correction or a complete reversal can be pretty important. We also know that markets form range patterns and traders can look for reversals at the support levels or the resistance levels of the price range, which is actually lower time frame trending market action. So we can really categorize reversals into two different things, bullish reversals, which is basically when a downtrend turns to an uptrend or the end of a corrective move. We can think of bearish reversals when the uptrend turns to a downtrend or at the end of a corrective rally when a market's in a downtrend. So let's go over some bullish candlestick patterns. Okay, and this is where we're gonna have price in a downtrend or in a corrective decline. And we're going to look to trade in the new direction, which is hopefully up. And we're gonna look at one, two, and three day candles. Okay, the bullish ones that you should know. The first one we're gonna look at is called the opening white Marabozu. And for short, I'm going to call it the OWM. Now, this candlestick pattern can also be found in a trend, and we want to see it in a trend, which will suggest a continuation of a trend. But since we're going to focus on reversals, we're also going to look for these after a prolonged downtrend or at the end of the corrective pullback, as we talked about. And listen, some are going to argue that the end of a corrective move is a continuation pattern. Well, technically, a higher time frame corrective move can be a complete downtrending market on a lower time frame. okay? So let's not get caught up in semantics. Here's a checklist. The high is greater than the close. The close is greater than the open. The open is the same as the low price. And the body must make up over 51% of the total candlestick height. Now the difference between the OWM and just the, the white Marabozu is the close is the high of the day or the time period that you're using. Now the OWM on the left here is shown inside of a range with lower highs, while the left one, the right one, sorry, is forming after a corrective decline in this particular stock. Now let's talk about the bullish Harami. This is a two candlestick pattern where in a downtrend or a correction, the first candle's body engulfs the body of the second candle, which must be a white or a green candle. Checklist here. The open of the first candle is greater than the close of the second one. The close of the second candle is greater than the open of the second candle. The open of the second candle is greater than the close of the first candle. And the real body of the first candle is greater than the real body of the second candle. And looking for these reversals on the weekly chart, that can really set you up for some good runs on the lower time frame charts. And as an example, the correction on the left ran over 300 pips. The middle one resolved into an 860 pip upside run. And the last one ran for 840 pips. Yes, you would not have gotten all that move, but you certainly could have banked some hefty pips off the daily chart when this weekly chart produced the reversal. But here's a tip. Look left 
to see where the last two candlesticks bounced from. And you're gonna see that there was market structure and these reversals came at potential turning points in the market. And that's always a plus. Now the three inside up candlestick reversal. So this is gonna be our three candlestick pattern. And it's basically an extension of the bullish harami we just discussed, but it has added confirmation. So the first candlestick is black or red body in a correction or a downtrending market. The second one is a white or green candlestick where the body is completely engulfed by the body of the first one. The third candlestick in this series is a candle where the closing price is above the previous close. And I wanna show you this pattern where it fails to produce a reversal even when it coincides with a complex pullback and a support zone. This failure would also include the bullish harami. Now, while this particular pattern, if you trade it at the completion of the pattern, it went against you. The double bottom did serve as a launch pad for a $3,000 run in Bitcoin. So those are pretty much the top three reversal candlesticks, the bullish ones that have been shown in studies to outperform most others. And I could tell you right now, I look for the first one, okay, in my own trading. Now what goes up must come down and that's where we're gonna start looking for bearish patterns. And then what we're looking for is to grab the top of an uptrend for shorts or to find the entry into a corrective rally that's occurring during the downtrend. The first one we're gonna talk about is the exact opposite of its cousin, the one we talked about earlier. And this one's gonna be called the opening black Marabozu. So we're gonna call it the OBM and it signifies bearish conditions and showing up in the middle of a downtrend, it shows acceleration to the downside. But remember, we're talking about reversals. You can see there's no upper shadow and the shorter the bottom shadow, the more significant this reversal candlestick can be. So the high equals the opening price, the open is greater than the close, close is greater than the low. And this chart here, it highlights several OBMs and it shows that location does matter. The first one occurs at a resistance level off to the left side of the chart, you can't see it here. And this is actually a good place to look for reversal candlesticks of any kind. This one happens in somewhat of a range environment and more importantly, this location sets up a complex correction in this particular stock. The bottom two happen at previous support that's not the place we'd be looking for a bearish reversal unless we had a breakout and a pullback scenario taking place here. And you're gonna find OBM candlesticks, a lot of them. So ensure that you're only taking action in places where we can expect a market reaction such as support and resistance levels. The descending hawk, and this is gonna be our two candlestick reversal pattern. And again, it's similar to the Harami pattern we discussed. So you wanna look for an uptrend or a corrective rally. We want a white body candle to appear. The second candle has its body fully engulfed by the previous body. And I wanna show you one that doesn't work out even when we're faced with a structure that we can actually trade against. Here, prices come up to a potential turning point where traders would look to position. And there are signs that resistance won't hold and I cover that in my video about breakouts. The link is above. And look, you can see that this pattern fits the definition of it and price does break down but I highly doubt this pattern had any influence on that breakdown because it took a long time to happen. The three outside down. This pattern is part of the bearish engulfing pattern with the third candlestick acting as a confirmation. The white candle forms in an uptrend. The second candle's black engulfs the body of the first candlestick. The last candlestick is also black or red, of course, and closes below the previous low. And I thought we'd take a look at futures and this is a daily gold chart the current top price zone was actually acting as support from way back in September of 2011 to April of 2013 before it broke to the downside. So price is currently testing the underside of previous support and so far has found that to be a resistance level. And as usual, the context matters when you're looking for candlestick patterns. Now, what about dojis? Look, they're re reportedly about indecision. But from all the testing I've read and anecdotal evidence on my part, they do not perform well in quantitative testing. And they can appear though in certain patterns such as a three outside down reversal and still matter for that pattern. So how do you trade these? As with any pattern, including the many chart patterns that are out there, you wanna consider entering a trade when the formation of the pattern is taking place at or near a potential turning point like support and resistance. 
the pattern is confirmed via follow through on the next candlestick. An oversold or overbought reading is taking place on an oscillator such as the RSI. And now your protective stop loss, that is essential. And I personally, I prefer ATR, the average true range. You might consider placing your stop where the pattern is violated. Now, profit taking can be as simple as scaling out at 1R, which is one times your risk, trail your stop loss. You could do that as well. And I want you to keep in mind that these patterns are not a holy grail and you really should be prepared to actively manage your trades. So keep aware of the market conditions and how they change. Make sure you log all your trades. Make sure you're using a tested trading strategy and ensure proper risk management that's going to allow you to have a string of losses without damaging your trading account. All right, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe here below if you have one more second to spend here and we'll talk to you soon.